So now in this video, we're gonna look at a 555 timer wired in monostable mode, also called one shot. So we will uh, trigger the 555 timer and the output will be high, the LED will be on, so it connects to five volts as good as it can, probably about 3.5 volts for uh, if you have the power supply at uh, five volts. But in any case, the LED will be on, output will be high for a period of time set by the capacitor and the resistor. And as long as we open up the uh, switch again so that uh, pin number two is high, then once that time is up, the output will go back low and stay there. Again, until we close the switch, give a low input to two. So. The pin number two is the uh, trigger pin. We got the capacitor here, the resistor, they set the timing. So normally, pin seven is connected to ground. That's also when the output is low. So both of these two pins are connected uh, directly to ground for the most part. The uh, discharge pin and the output pin. Pin six just looks at the uh, voltage there. Make sure it's staying less than two thirds of the uh, supply voltage. But uh, in any case, we remove the magnet. We're going to wire the magnetic switch so that uh, the sensor is normally open while the magnet is next to it. That uh, keeps it open so it's off. So I'll pin two. The trigger pin sees is five volts right there. Even though it's through a resistor, there's no current flow, so that five volts will build up right there. Once we remove the magnet, the switch closes. We'll have a direct connection to ground. So that's direct. So it's zero volts less than one third of the supply voltage. But in any case, a low input, zero volts in this case, to a pin number two means the uh, output will go high. Forgot to write output. Uh, I put pin three, sorry. So that's output. And also pin seven turns off. So as I said before, discharge pin, it uh, normally discharges the capacitor and lets current you know, flow through to ground so the capacitor doesn't charge. Now it turns off. It's like an open switch. It doesn't connect to anything. Current can go through the resistor and charge the capacitor. No current goes through the uh, threshold pin, pin six. All the current just charges the capacitor until it gets to two thirds of the supply voltage. Also, while the capacitor is charging, the output is high, connected as close to five volts as it can get. And uh, the LED will light up. Once the capacitor gets to two-thirds supply voltage, then it instantly discharges. Pin seven connects to ground. Also, the output goes back to ground right there. The capacitor instantly discharges. Both sides will be connected to, uh, directly to ground. And it can't charge again because current is uh, being pulled to ground on both sides at uh, all times. The switch has to be open, though, by that point. If uh, the switch is still closed right here. That's going to hold the output high until the moment you open the switch. So that's after the timing. The amount of time is controlled by the uh, resistor and the capacitor. Remember to be uh, completely discharged. There's formulas out there to try to get an exact time. But uh, for the most part, just realize the larger values you use, that's a 100 kilo ohm, 100,000 ohm resistor, and a 100 microfarad uh, capacitor. I think that's going to be close to about 10 seconds that we'll get. We'll see that on the board. But in case larger values, it will take longer to charge a capacitor. Lower values, it's going to go quicker. And of course, you can balance them out to get the exact timing you want. You can go higher on one, lower on the other, or whatnot. So in any case, just a quick review. The 555 timer we're going to use is in the dual inline package. So this is how the numbering goes right there. When you're wiring up an integrated circuit from a schematic, You'll see the uh, numbers on there, and uh, you just have to make sure you have the divots to the top, and then the top left is pin one. You work your way down, increasing the number until you get to the bottom, and uh, there's eight pins here, so we get down to four. We jump across and then work our way up. So five, six, seven, eight for an eight pin dual inline package. We're gonna use the NE555 for this. The micro A555 or UA, sometimes they'll uh, list it, should work. Uh, exactly the same, especially in a circuit uh, like this. I think they're uh, relatively close to exactly the same. You have to check the data sheet for uh, any differences. But there are a variety of uh, 555 out there that uh, don't have uh, quite the uh, power handling or whatnot for various reasons. So you want to always make sure if you have a uh, rarer version 555, 
definitely check the dash sheet and make sure it can handle whatever circuit you're wiring up. And there's the names of the pins right there. So here we are on the breadboard I forgot to mention, uh, but hopefully you saw it on the schematic. Pin number four there is directly to the positive supply. It's waiting for a low input as well. We don't want it to do anything, so we keep it high, five volts. And uh, I think it's waiting for less than half of the supply voltage, but we're keeping it off for this video. We power the integrated circuit with uh, pin number eight, positive supply, pin number one to the negative supply, right there. And uh, within the integrated circuit, it has three resistive areas to determine the one third and two third supply voltage, right there. As long as you don't modify pin number five down there. But in any case, positive supply, we got the pull up resistor to the switch. The output, we got the current limiting resistor to the long lead, the anode of the LED, short lead the cathode down to ground. So it lights up when the output goes high. For the timing, we got the capacitor and the uh, resistor there. So first, I'm just going to quickly remove the magnet and put it back. Doesn't matter how long I put it back, as long as we beat the timing right there. So we're going to see the LED turn off somewhere around about 10 seconds because we have the 100,000 ohm resistor there to set the charging time of the capacitor of 100 microfarad. And uh, so here you can see 100 microfarad right there up to uh, 50 volts. That side has to be more negative though. Easiest way to do that, so you'll generally see with these electrolytic capacitors, the uh, shorter lead down there directly to the negative supply and a longer lead towards the more positive side of the circuit right there. So we already talked about what those pins do. Now, I'll remove the uh, switch and leave it removed. We're gonna see that the LED stays lit for more than 10 seconds. We'll zoom in. So, I think, uh, we're not going to get lighting much better, but that's normally open right there. So right now it's closed. There's a direct connection from COM to the normally open because this isn't normal. We remove the magnet. This is NC right here. That's normally closed. We got uh, that terminal there. Pretty easy, just screws. You can put the wire in there and uh, clamp them down. So that's normally closed, but now it's open. We're not in the uh, normal position. So you can wire one or the other. Doesn't matter. Now it's been quite a bit longer than 10 seconds. The LED is still lit because we're still triggering it, but the capacitor is above two-thirds supply voltage. It's fully charged. So as soon as we get the magnet back, it's going to go into its normal state right there. Now the capacitor is totally discharged and the output is low. The LED is off. Power supply is five volts right there, about two milliamps approximately. While the LED is off and while the LED is on, about eight milliamps of current right there. So that's about it. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. Check out the links down below too. They all help. I would appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.